Oh, come on, somebody. Did you come to praise the name of the Lord this morning? Come on, can we clap our hands unto Him today? Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. I said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, I'll bless Him on the good day. I'll bless Him on the bad day. Come on, I'll bless Him when I'm walking through hell. I'll bless Him when I'm on the mountaintop. I'll bless Him when the bills are paid. Has anybody come to praise that name this morning? Hallelujah. I am so thankful to be in the house of the Lord today. So excited that you all are here to make it possible. And to all of our guests, can we make our guests feel welcome this morning? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for worshiping with us on this beautiful day. God has blessed us. You know, the scripture tells us this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Does anybody have a reason to rejoice today? And then the following part of that scripture, it says, and be glad in it. Amen, amen. Looking forward to what God has in store for this Sunday morning. I'm excited for what God's doing for the church. Excited that everybody is here, alive and well, doing good. You may be going through struggles or trials or tribulation, whatever it may be. But hey, how about we just put that on the back burner for a little while? How about we get in one mind and one accord? How about we come in with our hands lifted up, with our voices elevated to God, and watch what He's going to do in this service? Is anybody with me today? Come on, does anybody need some strength in the house this morning? This is where we draw our strength from. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning to start this service. Uh, many of you may be dealing with things that you need to go before God this morning in prayer. That's quite all right. He said to cast all of our cares upon Him, for He cares for us. And I'm so thankful that we have a God that cares. Come on. I'm so thankful that I serve a God that cares. Amen. You may think the world cares about you. That world don't care about you. That world don't want to see you prosper. The world don't want to see you do good in life. But we have a God that's in heaven that wants to see us do good. Amen. Uh, let's uplift Sister Catherine Bean. She had her pacemaker put in this week. Uh, God to touch her body in this, this, this time and this season that she's in. Let's uplift uh, Kim Talley today touching her body. I seen her back there. Thankful she's in service with us. Uh, Brother Ricky Butler, let's uplift him in prayer this morning. And also let's remember the Dye family. Uh, they had the visitation for Kennedy Dye's father yesterday, and I believe the funerals today. Yesterday, so they had everything yesterday. So let's please uplift that family today. All of us have probably experienced loss sometime in our life, and. It wasn't the gifts, it wasn't the cards that got you through that trying time, but it was someone that was praying. Amen. You may think you can't do anything for the kingdom of God, but you can pray for one for another. Hey, I might can carry this burden by myself, but I don't want to. I don't want to make it alone. I want someone to pray with me this morning. And that's how we're going to get God's attention here today in this service. We're going to go before Him in prayer with one and another. Amen. God, we thank you today. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mighty acts. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that's renewed every single day. God, I'm so thankful for the outstretched hand of the Almighty God today that sees us when we're down and out. Thank God for the strength that you give us in trials and tribulations. God, I thank you for this group of people that has come to serve you this morning, to worship you this morning. God, I pray that every mind would be clear, every heart would be open. I pray for every need that has been spoken today. God, every need that's unspoken this morning. I pray, God, that you would intervene. I pray your presence would sweep through this place. God, I've come with great expectations of your presence to fill this room. God, where your spirit is, there is liberty. God, I pray for liberty in the spirit of the Lord today. I pray that you would move through the word of God this morning. Move through the worship. Move through the communion with one to another. Move through the fellowship with our brothers and our sisters. God, I just pray that you would move and your will would be performed in this very service today. And we'll be careful to praise you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 
Aren't you so thankful that God still has all power? Amen. It said all power in heaven and earth has been given to that name. As they sing about the power of God this morning, let's worship with one to another. Amen.
anybody thankful we can call on that name? When it feels like I can't make it, I call on Jesus. Amen. You can all go ahead and be seated for just a moment. At this time, we're going to dismiss our kids to Kingdom Kids, uh, ages 5 through 12. Also, our nursery would be dismissed at this time as well. That's ages infant to age 4. As, as they're getting moved around and getting to their place of time for service for them, I'm going to go over just a few announcements before our ushers make their way. I'll be real brief with this because I believe Pastor will touch a little bit more on it later in the service. Uh, but May the 12th, that will be the starting of our family series. That will be Mother's Day. Uh, we will have muffins with mom. That's from 10 a.m. to 1045 uh, before service. That will be in our fellowship hall. Also, let's remember May the 19th. We've got a lot of things coming up through May, May and June. We'll need a lot of help moving forward. But May 19th is what we'll be having, Friend and Family Day. So start inviting people to that day. We want to have a great uh, outturn for that. May the 26th will be our Memorial Day cookout. That's always a wonderful time. That's from 4 o'clock that Sunday afternoon to 8 o'clock at the city park. Uh, if you want to come and... Get beat in some pickleball, some softball, tennis, whatever it may be. Us uh, leadership here will show you how it's done. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have a blast that day. I feel like a young man once again. I know I'm still young, but I feel like a teenager again, getting out there with all the kids, having a good time. June the 2nd, this will be Dedication Sunday to anybody that has a little one. Uh, that will be the time for that. There will be a sign-up sheet and also get with... Uh, Sister Summer, Brother Levi, or myself, whoever, uh, we'll get you more information on that. And June the 9th, we will be having graduation Sunday. I know as of right now, we have two that will be graduating uh, out of the youth class. So thankful for that. Excited for this season that they're about to embark in. And also, June the 16th, this will be Father's Day. And we did this last year, and I had a blast because I love donuts. But we're going to be having donuts with Dad. Amen. I think it was last year I made the comment. I said, I think we need to do steaks with studs. And someone said, well, we don't have to buy many steaks. Uh, nevertheless, that'll be a great time. And also, that'll be 10 a.m. to 1045 that morning prior to service. So uh, bring your dads on that day. But if you'll go ahead and stand at this time. Our, our ushers, if they'll be making their way, uh, this will be time of our tithes and our offerings today to give unto the Lord as he's given to us. And let's continue this atmosphere of worship because I believe God has something special planned this morning. Men of music, if you will.
thankful you know him this morning. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that I know him to be the God who is everything I need. He meets all of our needs. And if you've come in with a need in the house, God is able uh, to take care of that today. So glad you're here this morning. Can we give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise? What a blessed people we are. Blessed far beyond what we realize. Uh, we didn't have to sneak in here today. We didn't have to worship in a tunnel somewhere or in a place that uh, we were hiding. But we can come together freely. And aren't you thankful to live in a place where we're able to come and worship the Lord freely as we please? I'm thankful for a place to come and worship. Uh, hasn't God been good to us? He's blessed us with so much. And, and I'm so thankful. We should be a thankful, thankful people. Uh, so glad you're here today as Brother Tanner uh, went through some things earlier. Please uh, keep in mind we'll have a busy, uh, some busy weeks ahead. Uh, number one, just don't forget Mother's Day if you have a mother. If you don't have a mother, uh, remember your mother. And, uh, uh, you know, I know it's tough. These holidays, if you'll call it a holiday, it's difficult for some people. Uh, but we're going to celebrate it anyway. Uh, because God has been good to a lot of us, giving us great mothers that we love and, and cherish. If you have your Bibles today, I've, I've got a scripture I want to begin with. Um, actually, let's start with a couple different scriptures. Uh, Genesis 1 and 1, and then we're going to go to John 1 and 1 through 3. So proud of my wife. She brought her notebook today to take notes. She told me she actually brought it today. She's trying to ignore me right now, but she's, uh, she loves the spotlight. She does. You know, uh, and I've talked uh, to some people about this, this generation that we are living in today. And it's not just this generation. People like to blame the generation, but it's all of us combined. It becomes tough for us to sit any span of time uh, and, and listen to teaching or preaching and principles, study of God's Word, because we live in such a fast-paced world. We have such fast-paced devices. And teaching is not fast-paced. Neither is our journey with God. It's a slow pace. It's a step-by-step. -step. And so it would be good uh, if we'll all get, get used to maybe bringing a, a notebook in, come to Sunday school class. Uh, I know our men teach and do such a great job. I know Brother Keith done a great job this morning for all that uh, you that were here. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and John 1 and 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made I want to preach this morning with this subject by him and for him by him and for him and I hope I know the Holy Ghost will help me. I got faith knowing the Holy Ghost will help me. But I, I want us to be able to leave this house with a greater understanding of God and His uh, role for us in our life. Will you lay down your Bibles if you have them. Uh, lift your hands to heaven and let's pray and ask God for His blessings. God, thank you for your word. Thank you that we're able uh, to be able to ingest this word today. We are hungry for that manna that comes from heaven, that bread of life. We pray today that you would fill our hearts and minds with your, rule, with your laws, with your judgments. And God, that you would just open us up today and pour in us as you see fit, God. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. If there has ever been any question of how we are here and how things appear as they are today, uh, all of the controversy is settled in Genesis 1 and 1. As it says, in the beginning, God. Those are four powerful words that tell us simply everything that we need to know about us being here and the things that we get up and bless to see how they got here. You know, there's a lot of people that don't, they don't know exactly how things have come to pass. And they've got skepticism about how we got here. Whether uh, it was a big bang or whether a group of cells got together and slowly created what we have now. But thank God that we've got a book 
that's much more than a book, but it's the inspired Word of God. That it didn't leave us questioning how we got here. It didn't leave us questioning how the earth came to be. But the first verse in this book says, let me clear everything up for everybody. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. I'm thankful that we know that in the beginning that there was a God. And there just wasn't a God. There was a God that created he wasn't just a God that was sitting there, but a God that had, had a mind, if you will, to create. And Genesis 1 and 1 says he created the heaven and the earth. How did this earth get here? Genesis 1 and 1, he created the heaven and the earth. Why is this so hard to understand? Because you have to believe the Bible in order to believe this. You have to have faith in God's word to truly believe. Believe this. And that's why every believer that truly believes has no problem knowing who created the heavens and the earth. John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Look what verse 3 says. All things were made by Him. If anybody ever has any questions about where the trees come from, Blakely knows. We talk about the sun, we talk about the moon, we talk about the clouds. Who created those things? Jesus created those things. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the Word. All things were made by Him. It goes on to say in that Word became flesh. Speaking of Jesus Christ. Jesus was the orchestrator. He was the creator. He was the Word and all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made. That was made. It's amazing to think about how good God does things. How perfectly the seasons continually come. You know. We know there's going to be a spring. We know there's going to be a summer. We know there's going to be a fall. We know there's going to be a winter. Why? Because God orchestrated it that way. From down to the smallest organism to the greatest monuments and greatest things we see that are naturally made... God orchestrated those things. What a great God we have. Why don't we give Him praise for His beautiful creation? Just think about it. How we're able to draw breath created from just a tree. Trees that are sitting there that give us the opportunity to breathe in breath. How carbon dioxide and oxygen works together. How, how the bees come and pollinate the flowers. And, and how everything just has a way of working together. And they think that just happened. No, it happened when a God that was beautiful in creation said, I'm going to make something that's going to be a masterpiece. And, and I'm going to let it all flow together. I'm going, to, I'm going to create it the way I want to create it. I'm going to create it to the way that is pleasing to me. Psalms 124 and 8 says, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalms 115 and 5 said, Ye are the blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. And earth, will everybody agree with me today that God is the creator yes. of heaven and earth? The birds that we see, the animals, down from the depths of the sea to the heights of the heavens. He said, all of it was made by me, by him, by his hands, by his handiwork. Thank God for a God who makes things. I'm so thankful in Genesis 1 it said he took that which was void and without form, and when his spirit started to move across of it, guess what happened? Creation began to happen. It was void and without form, but we got a God with a vision that sees, and he said, I'm going to take that which is without form, and, and that which has no structure, and that which is his void, and I'm going to make it into all what we see today. What a beautiful God we have. But he didn't stop there. He got through making the sun and the moon, dividing the day from the night and dividing the land from the sea and creating the fowls of the air and the, the whales and the fish that we see, creating the stars of the heaven and the galaxies. He said, now, 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 let us make man in our image after our likeness. 
And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. It's beautiful and as majestic as the creation that he created was every animal. He said, I'm going to make a man. I'm going to make him in my image and I'm going to make him in my likeness. And I'm going to give him dominion over everything that he sees here on this earth. God created man in his own image. And in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. How did he do it? Genesis 2 said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put man whom he had formed. Would everybody agree today that man was made by the hands of Jesus Christ? You have a hard time believing that. You'll have a hard time letting him work any in your life. But if we can understand today and if we can truly believe that it was God Himself that created us, we would have a whole lot less problems and things that we worry about because we could understand if God was able to make me was able to put breath in my body blood in my veins was able to make my bones and my body connect the way it does if he was able to do this in me there is nothing that can stop him from doing anything else in my life it's the creator Isaiah 45 and 18 says for thus saith the Lord that created the heavens now don't get confused here in Genesis 1 and 26. God said, let us make man in our image, us, after our likeness, our. But Isaiah 45 says, for thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He, singular, hath established it. He, singular, created it, not in vain. But look what his idea was for the earth. He formed it to be inhabited. Now I know that may not blow your mind there. But all this beautiful creation that we see, God said, I made it just for you. Oh, what a great God we have. He said, yeah. You see the plants, you see the flowers, you see the landscapes, you see the waterfalls, you see the beautiful locations spread across this world. I, I made it all for you that you could inhabit it so you could draw breath from it, so you could, 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 could enjoy the reward, if you would, of the labor of the land. He formed it to be inhabited. And he said, I am the Lord and there is none else. He created it where it all worked together. Where man whom he created. And earth which he had created. Can, can work in tandem if you will. That man could enjoy this beautiful earth that they had. And that they did in the garden of Eden. Until sin crept in. Until sin came to pass. And then everything was, was destroyed or it was thrown into, into a big old pile of mess that man had to be cast out of the garden. And, and he began to understand that life with God is a garden, but life without God is a garden that is hard to grow. And it comes with toils and it comes with snares. But with God, it's everything. Psalms 115 and 16 says, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. I say this today. That this earth, the fowls of the air, the cattle, the earth over every creeping thing. God said, I'm giving man dominion over it. He's meant to, to rule it. He's meant to do as he would. I believe Adam even gave names to the animals. Name those things. Dominion. I'll get to that in a little bit. 
Colossians 1 and 16 and 17 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. So up there, down here, the things we see, the things we do not see, if it be a throne, if it be dominion, if it be principalities, if it be powers, all things were created by him. Everybody say, by him. by him. This next section is what I want to deal with today. It says they were created by him, but they were also created for him. For him. For his glory. God, when he created creation, it was always meant Creation, whether it be us or creation, whether it be the earth, it was always meant to, to give him praise. All right. Psalms 148 and 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his host. Praise ye him, son and moon. Praise him all ye stars of light. Praise him ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Listen to this. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He commanded and they were created. They were built. They were orchestrated. Not just for our Favor, but everything in creation was constructed that it may be in obedience and it may give glory to the Creator that created it all. He hath established them forever, and He hath made a decree which shall not pass. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we begin to see just how powerful nature is. Is and what it can do is it says in verse 37 that when Jesus was come nigh, even now to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. If the disciples rejoice and praise God with a loud voice, what should stop us? Why should we tone it down? Come on. Why should we not express ourselves? If, God, if Jesus didn't rebuke the disciples for doing it, I doubt he'll rebuke us from doing it. It says they praised him with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Tell them to hush. Quiet them down. But he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. If man which I have created... And given the earth, his man which I have created and bring breath in his nostril and gave him the opportunity to choose to praise me or not to praise me. If he keeps silent, that which is created to sit there, I will immediately command, open up your mouth and praise me. I'm trying to remind you today that whether we as humans give God praise or not, there's going to be something in creation that says hallelujah, hallelujah, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb that is worthy. The rocks will praise him. If the rocks don't praise him, he didn't have to use the rocks as an example. He could have said, if these men don't praise me, the trees will praise me. The flowers in the field will praise me. The thorns in the garden will praise me. The seas will praise me. The winds will praise me. Because I'm going to have something that praises me. Because the difference, listen, the difference between creation that is outside of humanity is they are completely obedient to the voice of who created them. 
Meaning when God says cease, they cease. When he says go, they go. When he says blow, they blow. When he says move, they move. Because they are completely obedient. They don't have an ability to choose whether they praise or don't praise. Whether they worship or not worship, they are wired in themselves that when God says give me praise, they will give praise. That's why I want to continue with Psalms 148 because it explains. It says, praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hell. Telling me fire praises God absolutely. Hell praises God. Yeah, it's accomplished in His glory. Snow and vapor and the stormy wind fulfilling His word. Wherever He tells that wind to go, it's going to blow. Wherever He wants to send a tornado, that's where it's going to go. Wherever He sends a tsunami, that's where it's going to go. Every wave fulfilling His word. Mountains and all hills. Fruitful trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl. Kings of the earth and all people. Princes and all judges of the earth. Both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord. From the things that we think just happened, like the rain coming down from the sky. He started with the rain and with the snow. Things that we think just happened. God said, oh no, those things are not just happening. They, they are bringing glory to my name. When the rain comes down from the clouds, that's bringing glory to my name. For so I commanded it shall be. And even he went on to the snow and the vapor. And he got all the way down to the kings. And he said, from the greatest of man to the least of nature, it has one job. And that is to praise the one who created it. To praise the one that established it. Well, I'll tell us something today. We'll have no problem praising God. If we'll keep in our mind, he's the only reason we're here. He's the only reason we're breathing. He is the only reason we are able to stand here today. Because we had a creator. But man has a fallen end. Romans speaks of this. Romans 1 and 21 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Speaking of mankind, he said, Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They had an understanding of who God was. Yeah. Oh, my Shonda Koya. But they didn't put him in his proper place. We, we, we understand he, he, he's God, but we don't want to glorify him as God. We know he's high, but he's not higher and lifted up than anything in our world. Well, they went on to say they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful because they became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. My God, we can't ever get to the point where we think we're anywhere close to the Creator. I believe it was Paul that wrote, Shall the clay speak to the potter which has made them? We have no power to speak to him in such a way that that we would be demeaning of him and and talk to him in such a way that he's just another Joe on the street. No, no, no. This is the creator of heaven and earth. And, And it says in Romans that people are messing up because they're changing the glory of God and the holiness of God and making it into something that's an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and the four-footed beast and the creeping things. They're relating the creator to the created. And God said, I'm not like the created. I'm holy. I'm righteous. I'm above all. And all things consist but by me. 
Don't get it confused today. You haven't seen nothing like God. That's why John said when he saw him, his eyes were like flames of fire. His hair was like wool. We cannot stand before the glory of God. We've never felt a glory like him. we never seen a glory like him. God is above all and in all. Don't you remember up on that mountain? That prophet, God said, I can't let you see my front. You never live. But he said, you can see my hinder parts. A man can't live beholding the glory of God. Man cannot live beholding the glory of God. It's too glorious. It's too majestic. It's too magnificent. It's too awesome. But, 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 but one day we will see him as we are. But we have to keep in mind today that we can't bring God down here and relate him to four-footed beasts and to animals and change him into something that we can physically touch and physically hold. That's not the God we serve. What it says. Change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. These people went crazy. Why? Because they lost sight of the power and the majesty of the Creator. And they changed the truth of God into a lie. And listen to this. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. They worshipped and they served the creature. What God gave us dominion over in the beginning was the very thing that he said they let have dominion over them. You know what it said? They worshiped the creature. Didn't God say he, he gave us power over animals and over all those things, dominion over all those things? He said where well, they were messed up as they started worshiping and serving the creature more than the creator. They, 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 they started living for something other than God. Something that was created. But the very thing that these people needed to understand and need to understand today and we need to keep in our minds is they were worshiping a creature that was worshiping the Creator. The very thing that they were serving was serving something else. The very thing they were worshiping was worshiping something, an idol. They was worshiping something that could be touched and something that, that, that could be worship, a graven image. Oh, but God said, even those animals, even those animals that they're sacrificing to other gods and even, even these trees that they've cut down and formed and made into idols, that very tree pays obeisance and honor to me. I'm try- I wish somebody would help me today and understand. You don't have to help me. I just want you to understand today that we need not get caught up in having idols and things down here on this earth that have been created by God. And we start to put God way down here and start to elevate other things in our life. God said, I'm nowhere near anything down here. I'm above all. And I'm through all. And he said, all is there for my glory. Isaiah 43 says, For everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. Originally, in that Garden of Eden, man, given dominion, had created for the glory of God. But what happened? You know what happened. Sin came in. Sin brings about death. Sin brings about chaos. Sin brings about all this garbage. And so man, as he was created, to, in God's image, in God's likeness, in God's similitude, that's just not talking about flesh, my friend. Adam was created as the likeness of God in such a way that he wanted to be like him. He didn't have the sinful nature in him. But you and I, when we are born, what do we have in us? We have that sinful nature. 
We have that sinful nature. And what God is telling Israel here, He said, when I call you by my name, when I put your, my spirit in you, you become different. Your nature changes. You put off that sinful nature and you put back on that similitude and that likeness of God. And look what he says. For I have created him for my glory and I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. You and I were made. We were born again. We were filled with the Spirit. We were saved from our sin for one purpose and one purpose alone. And that was to bring glory and praise and adoration and exaltation to the one who created us and gave us life. And the moment that we take away his glory and we take away his praise and we take away his adoration and put it on other things is the moment that we have misunderstood the very thing that we were created to do. You know, you look at these people who go out here, they're tree huggers. They love nature. I'm not saying you're a tree hugger if you're a nature lover. But some people are so obsessed with it. Obsessed with photography. Looking at the plants. And, and some people are obsessed with the herbs and the sage. And, and they're at one with nature. They think they're at one with nature. But in reality... The very majesty that they're worshiping is the very majesty that has been given by Him for us. They stopped at a median. They stopped at the middle. When God said, I'm the reason you're even having any of this. I want everybody to be reminded in this house today that you and I are here by the grace and the power of God. And please, let's not get distracted giving glory and giving praise to things that are corruptible and things that are going to fade. Please, for the love of God, serve Him all your days and serve Him all your life. For there is one who is getting all all of our praise and that is him that's him alone him alone here alone can we praise him just for a minute yes. change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator it goes on to say let the nations be gathered together let the people be ascended assembled who among them can declare this and show us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I've chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. And before me there was no God formed and neither shall there be after me. There is one God. There is one Lord. There is one faith. And there is one baptism. There is one Father of all who is above all, through all, and in all. And His name is Jesus. We must give Him glory. We must give Him praise because even if all creation, even if all creation bows down to other idols, still, God said, I'm still going to get my praise. I'm still going to get my adoration. I'll pull it from creation if I have to. But I'm going to tell you, there's so much power within us in such a way that even though we've been given a decision, if you will, or a choice to serve Him or not to serve Him, when we as human beings begin to praise and lift up His name, something changes and something happens. Why? Because He says, you're fulfilling my plan. You're fulfilling my will. You worshiping and bringing glory to me. You're fulfilling my will. You're doing everything that I want to do. And I want to encourage us today. I hope I've made sense in, in just a little while. That although everything in us are created by Him, we're also created for Him. And let's not get twisted up in worshiping politicians and worshiping presidents. And God forbid we start worshiping preachers. God forbid we start worshiping pastors. Because they are created. They're created. They're incorruptible. They're corruptible, I mean. But there is one who is incorruptible. God above. Who says, I I want it all. I'm a jealous God. You are my people. I bought you with my blood. I died on Calvary for you. I want your love. I I want your worship. I want your praise. That means so much to me. But 
We've given it all different directions. The gods of this world, the things of this world, and I say we, just talking about everybody in general. Let us be reminded today that God wants our worship. For so we were created. And I want to encourage you today. Maybe you've got caught up given your time and your effort to so much other things, to things maybe in this world, maybe it's, I don't know, it could be anything. God said, He says they did not, listen to this, I need you to understand this, and I'm finishing. Listen to the wording of this. They worshipped and they served. The creature more than. It didn't say, listen, it didn't say they worshiped and served the creature all of the time and worshiped God any. It didn't say that. It just says they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. If he's not number one, he's not at all. He's above all, folks. He's above all, folks. Didn't say you didn't give him some worship. Didn't say you didn't know who he was. Didn't know he was God. It just said you had some other things that you worshipped more than the Creator. Will you stand to your feet this morning? I hope I've helped somebody, made sense. I feel like I've jabbered along. Praise be to your name, God. We worship you today, God. We praise you. You've told us to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable worship service. It's our form of worship. It's to live unto you, unto you, unto you, unto you. Folks, there's always things we can worship. It's always been there since the beginning of time. People have made worship out of trees. We look at Greek and Greek mythology. Look at many religions we have today. A lot of them, they have so many gods worshiping a different God. God of the moon, God of the sun, God of the trees. So in some sense, everybody is feeling that sense of there's power in even these created things. They want to give praise unto these things. The God of the sea, the God of the wind, the God of love. God's up here saying, I am God alone. I am God alone. There's none beside me. There's none before me. There's none after me. Here's the call today. Here's the call. Let us make God number one in our lives. I know we're not surrounded by a bunch of gods that we get down and worship, but the gods of our time that have crunched in all of our time. God's up here saying, please just make me number one. I'm the one that redeemed you. I'm the one that saved you. Here's the call today. The call is, if you are in this house, you know that you can give more worship and praise to God than you are living in your life right now. I think that would be every one of us. We could say, God, help me. Help me. Help me not to get confused. God, help me to not get sidetracked. Don't let me get caught up in the beauty of this world when the beauty of this world compares nothing to the beauty of our Creator. Folks, this world we live in is so... There's so many aspects of it that's so beautiful. I want to travel the world. I want to see all the creation. Oh, but none of it is going to compare to Him. God, thank You for loving us. Thank You for caring for us. We were created to worship You, God. Don't let us give our worship to another. They sing today. I just invite you if you want to pray, you can come pray. If you want to 
lift your hands. If you want to just say hallelujah to God, that's so wonderful. Whatever you feel like, let's worship. Because of who He is. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who.